You mentioned Vivek, he did officially endorse Trump and made his first appearance on the campaign trail with Trump uh, in Atkinson, New Hampshire last night. Here's a little bit of how that looked in SOT 2. We have challenges to address in our own party right here at home. So you know what, if you want somebody who's going to foist onto you to use your social media account, you want to use a driver's license to do it, to have the inter- right to use the internet, this man's not your man. There's another candidate in this race who'll do that for you. It's Nikki Haley. You want to send, you want to cut Social Security, you want to cut Medicare, you want to cut veterans benefits so we can fork over more money to Ukraine so some kleptocrat can buy a bigger house? Vote for Nikki Haley, not this man right here. Not another one. There is not a better choice left in this race than this man right here. And that is why I am asking you to do the right thing as New Hampshire and to vote for Donald J. Trump as your next president. So you could hear some chants of VP in the audience. I mean, look, I'm not a political prognosticator in this way. I don't run campaigns. I don't keep fingers on the tabs of how people are doing with with this focus group or that. But I don't think there's any chance of him choosing Vivek Ramaswamy as his VP. What do you think? It, it seems unlikely because Vivek was a relative unknown. I mean, that's what's so amazing about this race. Nobody had known Vivek. I, I actually go back to college with Vivek. He was at the law school while I was an undergraduate. So I've known that this guy is really sharp and talented for a long time. But the broader public had never heard of him until, what, a year ago at most? And and he went from zero name recognition to polling at something like 8% in the GOP primary and, and doing pretty well. I mean, that, that's very impressive. He outlasted senators and governors. That, that's amazing. But uh, I, I don't... I don't really see Trump picking a- another Trump-like figure. You know, Vivek is a very wealthy guy. He leans a little bit populist. He comes from business. He's not a career politician. So Trump already has that. Trump already does that. And, and he'll probably balance out the ticket with someone who compliments him. That's what Mike Pence's role as the running mate was in 2016. It's probably not going to be Mike Pence this time, I would imagine. But But I could see someone there more to compliment him. Now, would Vivek have a role in an administration? I could easily see that sort of thing happening. Yeah, uh, maybe. But, but uh, you know, I, I can't help but notice in those comments from Vivek that Trump is a weirdly unifying figure for the Republican Party because Trump attracts the libertarians. He attracts the people. That, that whole campaign pitch was Nikki Haley wants to spy on your computer and see what websites you're going to. Make he, you he register under your side. real name register under your real name, demask you. But, but then he also attracts the traditionalists and the conservatives who are a little bit more willing to wield state power. He, he attracts the people over at Compact Magazine and the American Post Liberal. And he says that we need to focus on strengthening our communities more and we need to use the government to do some good. So he, he actually, maybe for the first time since Reagan, seems to bring together what was once called the three-legged stool of conservatism, the traditionalists, the libertarians, and even the foreign policy hawks. Right now, everyone's painting Haley as a neocon. She seems much more uh, inclined toward foreign intervention than Trump is. But don't forget, Trump is also the guy who brought peace to the Middle East through the Abraham Accords. Trump is the guy who took out Iran's top general. You know, Trump is the guy who obliterated ISIS in Syria. So he, he was willing to use American military force, I think, in a much more judicious way than some of his predecessors. But for all that we hear that Trump has destroyed and split up the Republican Party, uh, from my vantage, it looks like he's unified those three legs better than anyone since Reagan. If Trump could control his temperament, the party would be behind him 98%. You're exactly yeah. right. Uh, he he's done The way he governed should have been to the appeal of virtually every single Republican, and then some, um, you know, outside the party as well. It's his temperament that people find objectionable, you know, and the temperament, I'm using that word in a sweeping way. You know, it's the guy who doesn't comply with the subpoena when he gets hit with, you know, like his fighting nature benefits him and undermines him. 
Um, right. And some people are just, and they don't want the drama, you know, like I want to go about my life, not me, because I'm a newswoman, but most people want to go about their lives thinking about themselves and their kids and their community and not about Donald Trump. But when he's president, when he's in the national spotlight, he sucks up all the oxygen. It's all you can talk about, all you can think about, all anybody else is talking about. You turn on the evening news, there he is. You turn on the morning news, there he is. You pick up a morning paper, he's there again. The entertainment shows, he's there. The, the nightly award shows, he's there. He's everywhere. And people get exhausted, my, right? Exhausted. My friend Alan Estrin, who's the executive director of PragerU, he made this point to me months ago. We were all talking about how it's not really about Donald Trump. It's about the party, or it's about the country, or it's about this policy, or it's this movement. And he said, you know, Michael, I think it really just is about Donald Trump. <laughs> you know, great <laughs> men move history sometimes, and Donald Trump is a world historic figure, whether you love him or hate him, and it, it is about him. People are just fascinated by this guy. He operates differently. He's an American original. It makes us pull our hair out sometimes. It makes us cheer sometimes, but, but we can't look away from him. And, and Alan's point, as a screenwriter in Hollywood, is that because of that, because his his role in the narrative is that of the protagonist, that the party is just going to be focused around him as long as he is around. And th these were back in the days when we thought maybe it'll be DeSantis, maybe it'll be this guy, maybe. But but no, actually, that that observation has proven to be true. And uh, if Donald Trump has dominated headlines and tabloids and, and captured people's attention for forty years or more now. That's not going to change anytime soon, no matter how much the policy wonks in the GOP might wish it were so. True or false, using your tax refund to pay off credit card debt is smart. False. Donewithdebt.com published a strategy designed to let you keep your hard-earned tax refund and reduce or eliminate credit card debt. Most Americans owe thousands in credit card debt that will take years to pay off, if at all. It's stressful. I get it. Done with debt, found that filing bankruptcy is usually not the answer, and taking out loans to pay off credit cards can increase debt. In fact, they say it usually does. When you engage Done With Debt, their legal experts and skilled negotiators will take on the credit card companies for you. Their winning strategies are designed with one goal, solve your debt situation quickly and permanently. First things first, chat with a Done With Debt strategist and explore your solutions. Some debt fighting strategies are time sensitive, so you're going to need to move quickly. For a free consultation, visit donewithdebt.com. That's donewithdebt.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.